Isn't it interesting how things that I might like, you might hate, and things that I might hate, you probably also hate because we're on the internet and that's what you're supposed to do. Today in this video, we're going to be looking at the latest update from Samsung, the One UI 7 update that is rolling out onto millions of people's phones. And with this update, there are a whole bunch of changes that unfortunately are driving some of you absolutely crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how many of these we can get fixed on your phone. These are the top six things I've seen people complain about and how to address them. And of course, if you want to see this in a written form, you can check out the link in the description that's going to take you to my website, shanecraig.tech. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to show this in video form. Number one is the fact that on One UI 7, on your new Samsung Galaxy phone, if you press and hold your power button, you are now going to trigger Gemini rather than triggering your power menu. And for some of you, this is very, very annoying. I actually enjoy using Gemini, so it's okay. But again, you might hate it. And it's pretty easy to change, luckily. What you're going to do is jump into your settings. You're going to scroll down to, I believe it is advanced features. It is. And you're looking for side button. In this menu, you can change long press to Bixby or the power off menu. Of course, if you do get used to using Gemini, you can simply swipe down on the top right of your screen to see your quick settings, and you should see a little power button right there. That's how I tend to turn off or restart my Samsung devices now. And honestly, that is the perfect segue into the number two thing. With One UI 7, your notification shade and your quick settings are by default split into two different things. If you swipe down on the right side of the screen, you're going to get your quick settings. But if you swipe down on the left side of the screen, you're going to get your notifications. Now, you can horizontally swipe to move back and forth between these two, but personally, I don't like this at all. But luckily, it is also very easy to change. On this screen here, where you swipe down on the right-hand side, you're just going to click on this little pin icon and then click on panel settings and change it to together. And guess what? Now, it's exactly like it was before. If I swipe down anywhere, I'm going to get some quick settings and my notifications. Swipe down again, there are the full quick settings again, just like it used to be. Now, this next one is something that is only like partially fixable. So now if you swipe up to go into your app drawer, the drawer is now vertical. You just keep scrolling up and down. Now, again, for me, I much prefer this. It used to be swipe up to get into your app drawer, and then you had to swipe side to side to get through your apps. That was always just weird for me. Samsung was like the only company doing this. You can kind of fix this. So if you swipe up to get to your app drawer and you click on the three icons down here at the bottom and you click on sort and change it to custom order, things will now be sort of paginated in a horizontal fashion. The reason I say this is only a partial fix is because as you can tell here, this is not alphabetical. If you go clean up pages, it will rearrange things to get rid of spaces in between, but it will not order them alphabetically. You would actually have to go in and manually do that, which is very, very annoying. Or just put things in the order that you want them. But if you really need the horizontal scrolling, you can absolutely do that personally. I'm just going to stick with alphabetical and vertical scrolling. For the next couple of fixes, we're going to need a couple of things. So the first thing is called good lock. What you're going to do is you're going to go into now actually in the Google Play Store. You can search for good lock and you should see it appear at the top of the list. Click on that and go ahead and give that an install. Once you're in the GoodLock app, you will see several different little plugins that you can install to modify certain things, and that's what we're going to be using for the next couple of fixes. So this next one is specific to the Z Fold 6, but it's definitely annoying for some people. If you look at my home screen, you can see that there's quite a bit of wasted space on the margins of the screen, right? And if I actually long press, go into my settings and change this set in here that says cover screen mirroring to on. What this basically means, as you can see here, is that the layout that's on your cover display is going to be mirrored on your inner screen. Once I apply this, you'll see that that margin has shrunk and is back to normal again. This is some sort of, maybe it's a bug, maybe it's just the way that they want it to be, but it's something that only really seems to be a problem if you, if you have cover screen mirroring turned off. And again, this is annoying for some people. So how do we go about addressing this? What we're going to do is we're going to go back into GoodLock and we're looking for the module called HomeUp. 
click this little install button and it should install this module pretty darn quickly and it should then jump up to the top of the screen. Click on Home Up and now we're looking for an option that says, let's skip through this little brief intro. First, we gotta turn it on, I guess. Home Screen is where we're gonna be going. Click on this and now you'll see DIY Home Screen. Go ahead and toggle that on and now let's go home. And there's actually something I'm gonna quickly do before we do this fix because I think it's important. Look at how this widget looks. Look at the layout that it's showing. And now if I switch back to cover screen mirroring being on, notice how it's a different thing. It's showing me different things, even though it's basically the same size. That's pretty annoying. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this widget. We're gonna move it up here where we have some space. And now we're going to enlarge it so that it shows that correct layout. Now I'm gonna long press on a blank area and we're looking for DIY home up here at the top of the screen. If we click on this, what this allows us to do is put our widgets anywhere we want them. They can even overlap on top of or behind other different widgets. As you can see here, you can resize them without changing their layout. So what you can do is you can put this widget way on over there to the edge, wherever you want them to be. So using this, you have that full freedom. Whatever margin you want there to be, doesn't matter. You can do whatever you need to do. Make this layout look exactly how you want it to look. Now with One UI 7, we have something called the Now Bar. And you can see here on my always on display or lock screen, there's a little widget down here that shows what music is playing. Now to me, this seems like a perfectly reasonable solution. I can click on this to play and pause the music just fine. And of course, if you have other ongoing tasks like a timer or something like that, you can actually scroll through more than one thing. But that's how you're going to do play and pause on media. But some of you I've seen in comments actually prefer the older way of doing things where there was a widget up here at the top. To do this back in good luck, once again, we're gonna scroll down and look for Lockstar. Go ahead and give that a quick install and we can go from there. What this is gonna allow you to do is put any widget you want on your lock screen. So it's not quite as good as having a universal media player, but let's say most of the time you listen to music through YouTube Music. Well, you can do that. Click on the little lock star button down here and click on app widgets. You can then scroll down and just grab the desktop widget for YouTube Music. And let's just add that right there. You can click on it and you can resize it, make it you know, go across the full screen, center it there, whatever you need to do. And boom, there you go. Let's click on done. And now on my lock screen, there is the widget that maybe I would prefer to have. Now you're gonna have some duplication going on there, but if you absolutely have to have that widget there on your screen, you can have it on your screen. And lastly, if you go back to the lock screen, you'll notice that I do not seem to have any notifications actually on my lock screen, despite the fact that I do have several notifications on my device. Let's fix this. If we go into our settings, we're gonna scroll down and look for notifications. That's a pretty good place to look. And then lock screen notifications. Make sure this is turned on. And then you're gonna to wanna to put this onto cards to make these notifications actually be much more visible. Let's see how this looks now. Boom, there are our notifications back on our lock screen. So guys, those are the top six things that I have seen the most comments about. And I think that they can mostly be addressed pretty effectively. If you have another concern or problem, drop a comment down below and we'll see if we can come up with any solution for you as well. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.